This is just one piece on a multi-part course on designing characters inside of Animate CC. Pre-order on Toon Files and receive 20% off. Link is in the description. Before we get too far, I think it's best I overview the draw tools in Animate CC so that way you understand the basic functionality of each. I'll be using mostly the line tool when I'm designing my own creations. However, I probably will be jumping over to some other tools as we get to various parts. So let's overview these really quick. First, I'm inside of the 01 Chad Vector animate.fla file. You don't have to even open this up. I'm actually just going to hide the sketch and create a new layer just to fool around with. You can really have any document opened up if you wish to just play around with the tools. So starting with the pen tool, you'll notice above the pen tool, there's this horizontal line. If you see where my cursor is, that is separating the selection tools from the draw tools. And the draw tools extend all the way down to the brush tool. And then you'll see there's that horizontal line and then we have a bone. So we want to focus just on the draw tools right now. And we'll start with the pen tool. I'll be honest, I don't use the pen tool a whole lot but it does have its uses and there's many artists who love it. If you've ever worked with After Effects with drawing shapes or creating masks, this is a very similar process. And of course, Illustrator has a similar tool as well. So if we come in and we click and drag with this tool, what we're doing here is determining how this line is going to curve once we connect it to another point. Since we're working with vectors, it's really all about going from point to point. It just depends on how you're creating the transition from those points. So let's just go with something like this and release. Now I'm going to come over here and click and drag. Now you'll see we're getting a preview of a line. And as I come in and adjust the Bezier on this, we can adjust just how this curves. And you can see once I release, it will draw in the line properties depending on how I have it all set up here. You can see I have my stroke pretty high and I have a black stroke. You can adjust all that on the properties with any tool just like that. So let's just keep going. You'll see when I place my cursor over here it gives me this symbol underneath the pen. So that means I can continue on here and go like that and I'm basically moving this point when I'm doing this. So you can see I can come in here and I can adjust the Bezier just like that at any time if I wish. But now if I come down and click and drag, I can continue to create this line. Click and drag, click and drag, click and drag. I think you get the idea. So now let's say you get to a certain point and you're wanting to just go in and modify. Well, as we talked about, you can do that with the pen tool, but it might be easier to actually use the sub selection tool which is also A on your keyboard. The subselection tool allows us to easily just come in here and click on these little white points, which are the Bezier handled points. And then we can just modify, increase, decrease, do whatever that we need to do with these lines to get them how we want them to work. You can also hold an alt and alter just one point of the Bezier. So if you want a very specific tight curve like this, you can do that by holding an alt. You can see that it's creating that effect. Now also, when you're doing this, you're also going to notice it's creating additional points to compensate for some things. And that's something else to keep in mind too. So it's kind of an interesting tool in how it works that way. You'll notice those points weren't there until I came in here and made this different correction and then it came in and adjusted. And I can't quite get it back to that way, but I think you saw it there before. So that is a little bit about the pen tool. Again, it works with Bezier handles almost exclusively, and it allows you to easily come in here and make modifications. So that way you can get exactly what you want out of your shape. I'm just going to click on this key and hit delete so I can clear this layer. And now let's move down to the next draw tool. Technically the text tool is a draw tool, but we're not going to be covering that. We're not going to be doing any text in this course. So let's just go down to the line tool next. Now this is the tool I prefer. And it's probably because back in the day when Flash was, you know, newer, <laughs> it's called Animate CC now, but when it was referred to as Flash, and we did SWF cartoons, they weren't videos. 
the idea was to create very simple shapes with little points to save on space <laughs> because the 56k modems of the day had a hard time you know streaming this stuff so I've kind of stuck with that mentality. I like to use as few points as possible when designing, but again, it's all a preference. So when it comes to the line tool, you're essentially just creating straight lines, just like this. You can release and create a straight line, create a straight line, and you can also connect them pretty easily. You can see by doing this, I'm connecting the lines together, and that's also really nice. So you can come in here and kind of do something like this. Well, we can also go back to that sub selection tool and click on any of these points that we've created with the line tool and make adjustments as well. So if I start to bring some of this stuff out, I can very much do that. Come in here and hold an alt. I can start to adjust the Bezier handles and create my curves. And in a way, it does work like the pen tool. It's just you're laying down your flat lines first, your straight lines there's really no frills to it. It's just straight lines, point to point. And then from there, you can go in and you can start making your modifications. And let's say you want more. You have one point here and you have one point there and you're like, ah, I want something here to modify. Well, we can also do that, I forgot to mention, with the pen tool. If we hold down on the pen tool, we can click on add anchor point. And we can come in here and just click and add a point right there to the line and then using the pen tool or the sub selection tool we can come in here now and continue to make those modifications and it's a pretty seamless process with that whole setup so you are really at an advantage if you use multiple tools when working you shouldn't limit yourself to one even though I say I use the line tool I do use it the most but I do use other tools to help me correct as well. And you don't have to use Bezier handles when you're doing this because you can take the selection tool and come in here and just modify the line just like this. You can see, for instance, that this line has two points on the top and bottom, and it will adhere to that. It'll anchor those two points and you can bend it back and forth. Also notice when I place my cursor in the middle where there's no points, it gives me a curved icon underneath the cursor. If I come up here to the point, it gives me a 90 degree angle. So if I click and drag when it's giving me the 90 degree angle, I can actually move the point I originally set down for that line as well. So I can move it like this and bring it down like that and then decide, okay, now I want to make some modifications with the sub selection tool with how the Bezier is working. And I can come in here and do that and then be like, okay, so now that I have that, let's just adjust the bend a little bit with the selection tool so we have this little squiggly line going like this. So again, different ways you can approach this stuff. Keep it in mind that you don't want to use just one tool, even though if you favor one tool over the other, the others have definite uses. Also in Animate, we can create shapes, rectangles, ovals, and we can create a polystar. And you can see there right here, just these different shapes, and you can click on one. You have your fill and stroke options within the properties. So if you want to change your outline color and your fill color and the stroke size, as well as the style, if you want it to be a solid line, if you want it to be a dashed line, you can do all of that right here. And you can even adjust if it has like a fake looking pressure effect. If you want it to look like you drew it with a stylus or a pencil and it has like that taper off effect depending on how much pressure you are applying in that moment, we could do something like that if we wanted to. You can also choose if you want your ends of your lines to be rounded or capped. And I should also notice when you go back to your line tool, you can do that as well with all this. It's not just set to the shapes. So you can create your shape using universal settings here with your lines. But if we come in here now and draw this out, you can see again, it creates that fake looking effect where there's different pressure being applied. And it can be useful to do that kind of stuff if you're looking for a more customized or perhaps a more traditional look. And again, you can swap this around. You have your different shapes. We can come in here and Take advantage of this and just try out these different widths and see if there's something that we like. And you can do all that. And of course, continue to adjust all this. Every shape has different angle effects. So you can see right here, we could do like a half pie or 
Maybe we're creating a piece of pizza and you know a piece has been taken out. Whatever you want to do, you can come in here and definitely play around with a lot of that and get some very unique looking shapes and really customize it to your own style. And then the last three tools are similar in that they are freehand tools. So if you have a tablet, if you have an iPad Pro, a stylus, you like to freehand draw, these are the tools you want to look at. The first one is the pencil tool. And we can come in here and you can see I can just start adding some lines. Now, it's a little bit different in that essentially you can come in here and it'll kind of straighten lines out once you complete drawing. You can see right here, I can come in here and just kind of make this curvy and I'm doing this and that and this. And when it gets done, it's kind of just jaggedy. And that's essentially how this one works. You can go in and just kind of create something and it'll make it more jaggy. And then again, just like the other tools, you can come in here and you can see kind of where these points are now. Hold an alt, click on this point, and you can start then modifying that way if you wish. We just clear this really quick and go back to that tool. And the same applies for your styles. Again, this goes across basically all the draw tools where you can do your stroke, your width, and all of that. And now the paintbrush tool is a little bit different. First, it allows you to smooth out your lines. So if we turn this to low as an example, and I come in here and I just draw this out, you can see basically what we are drawing is what we get. But if I turn this to high, and I come in here and I'm trying to do something jaggedy, or let's say just something a little bit more complex, it'll actually kind of go in and smooth it out a little bit, just to give you a little bit more help to make it look smooth and nice and clean. But also, we have other options. Other options include draw as fill. So if you wanted to create like a fill effect, you could do that as well. And you have, of course, all the other options we went over before. Just clear that really quick. Now the brush tool gives you some unique features. First, if I come in here and just draw this, you'll see that we get a nice tapered effect. And it kind of goes based off of pressure, as you can kind of see. But also, it is a little bit different because we can adjust the stroke or anything like that up here. You can adjust the pressure. So we were talking about that pressure. We can adjust the size of it and also the minimum size. So you can basically set it up how you want that pressure to be. You could have a very minimum effect and then a very maximum effect to kind of give it more of a dramatic tapering. Although I can't really get to do that right now. But then again, I'm not using a stylus, I'm just using my mouse here. And you have your smoothing on the bottom as well. So if you don't like how smooth it looks, you can come in and try to make it look a little bit more, less smooth, more jaggedy, whatever that you need to do with this. And of course, if you need to come in, you can always make modifications. Once again, using your selection tools, you can see it works way differently with the brush versus, for instance, lines. And the same goes with this. You can see by creating something like this, we have so many points that we can come in here and just go in and really adjust. And in fact, there's so many points, it might be almost pointless <laughs> to do this because what can we do with that? But as you can see, there are a lot of options when it comes to drawing. For this course, I'll be focusing more on the line tools, perhaps a little bit of the freehand tool and the shape tools. But we might use some of these others as well. And again, if you find those other ones to be more comfortable, by all means, go ahead and use them. I want you to get used to the drawing process using tools that you feel are going to benefit you the most.